to my boy to be. There we go, DeFaze and uh, the Mambo Craze, and I do like that. Uh, before that, it was The Killers and uh, Human. Time on The Breakfast Show. Uh, we're exactly 23 minutes. That's after the hour of 8 o'clock here on the programme. It is a Thursday. I have to say we've got with us here in the studio this morning, Dr. Computer, Alex Newman. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Jerry. Great and, to be here. Yeah, nice to have you. Do you like getting out in the morning? Because, you know, we've been so used to being distant. And, uh, do you just sort of like getting out? As long as it's to come to somewhere, you know, fun like the breakfast show, yes. That has free biscuits. As well. Yes. I and so. coffee. And coffee. There's no end to it, is there? Um, right. A condiment and beating somebody up. A salt and battery. Oh. Batteries. This is an interesting point because um, I've sort of been thinking, because now we have different batteries that charge at different rates and we have different adapters that do fast charging, super fast charging, or come back in a week <laughs> charging. Um, do we need to be careful what charger we use with what battery or not? We definitely should be careful and mindful of all the different charging options that we have, especially now that uh, a lot of phone manufacturers are in the name of uh, cost cutting, I mean, uh, being nice to the environment, are not shipping um, chargers with a lot of their phones or other devices mm -hmm. for that matter. Mm -hmm. So we need to be mindful of the kind of charging that we do for several reasons. One being safety, of course. Uh, you hear a lot of uh, urban legends about people using their phones, having them explode or whatever. I mean, this is nothing new. I remember when, um, you know, right, right when I was starting to come to the breakfast show, one of the things that was in the news was uh, exploding laptop batteries. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember a lot of memes coming out uh, regarding that uh, that problem. And a lot of the times, these accidents do come to pass because people choose the wrong chargers, the wrong cables, or they do something that isn't, you know, safe to do. It's You see a lot of uh, people sharing information or misinformation in this case, saying that you shouldn't charge your phone uh, overnight or that you shouldn't... Uh, have your phone on your nightstand or things like that. That's just, uh, you know, maybe well-intentioned, but misinformation nonetheless. Uh, charging has come a long way since the days of, you know, having something come in and, uh, you know, if you buy a new device or whatever, you had to charge the batteries overnight mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. um, wait for them to be discharged completely in order to charge right. them mm -hmm. again and the memory effect and all that. That was way back then, when we had like nickel cadmium batteries and nickel metal hydride batteries and so on. But now most batteries, if not all of the batteries on our modern equipment, are based on lithium ion technology or similar. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things about lithium ion is that you can charge it a lot faster. It can provide a lot more power per cubic uh, centimeter of uh, battery. And it can also be a lot smarter. The downside is lithium, metal, uh, lithium ion batteries, um, when exposed to the air, can ignite and explode. So we need to be really careful about this. Um, I, I remember another piece of misinformation that was uh, making the rounds, even as recent as a couple of weeks ago, that uh, people have these devices that can uh, detect lithium batteries so that they can tell where laptops are stored in cars and things like that. There are, there is such a thing as a lithium detector for air, but it's about the size of a mini fridge. So I don't think nobody wants mm -hmm. to carry mm -hmm. around a, a, a mini fridge on their back. And also, if you detect enough lithium for these things to trigger, you usually have them in the place where they manufacture the batteries. And if these things go off, everybody has to evacuate the building because it's highly poisonous. That's why a lot of these batteries come wrapped in several layers of insulation so that it doesn't come out. And when you dispose of them, you shouldn't throw them in the garbage. They should be taken mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. a place where you mm -hmm. can responsibly recycle them. Because if you throw them in the garbage, eventually they're going to puncture and they're going to catch fire. And it could be somewhere as close to your home as the trash can or the, the trash compacting device that's in the, 
the, the garbage truck, or it could be in the landfill, and it could be, create some sort of a forest mm -hmm. fire. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the leaching of those uh, metals into the ground, which can then seep into groundwater and poison your children's water. So be careful about that. But let's go back to the charging. Um, one of the most important things that came out of uh, a lot of effort, especially by the European Union, was to try to make these chargers as uniform as possible, opting for first the micro USB charger, then the, the USB-C charger that's pretty much on every modern piece of equipment mm -hmm. that we have right now. That being said, that ubiquitous, now ubiquitous USB-C uh, connector can do a lot more than just provide power. It can connect peripherals, it can connect devices to each other, and when it comes to providing power, it can do so in a, in a, a very varied, uh, you know, uh, number of ways. It used to be that you could charge um, these phones at 5 volts, which is the standard USB voltage, at about half an amp, which gives you about 5 uh, watts of power. Now, a lot of these batteries, as you can see, they have like 4,500 milliamp hours or 5,000 milliamp mm -hmm, hours mm -hmm. or whatever. And using one of these USB bog standard chargers, it can take upwards of six hours to charge a standard phone, especially one of the flagship ones with the bigger batteries. And if it's a tablet, it could take like 10 or 12 hours. And if it's a laptop, you can technically do so. It'll just take overnight, at least 10 to 12 hours to charge. But nowadays, we usually need our devices a lot quicker than that. We need them to be charged. We need them charged all the time. And we need them to have enough power to do all the everyday tasks that we do. So in that regard, you see a lot of chargers saying they are quick charge compatible or fast charge or super fast charge. And you see that there's at least half a dozen different terms that kind of convey the same meaning, but they don't mean the same thing, unfortunately. And that can give uh, that can lead to a lot of confusion in consumers, unfortunately. So you sometimes want to buy like a fast charger for your phone, but you see that it still charges really slow. So what can be done about it? I think one of the first things that you need to understand is if you bought the charger or the cable at a traffic light or right next to a cash register, you're probably not getting a good one. I was going to bring uh, a brand name or allegedly brand name charger that says fast charge on the on the cover and everything. And it has the all the branding and the lettering. I bought that for I think it was like eight or ten dollars in in a store in the back of El Dorado. And I can tell you, it's not an original charger. It's not a fast charger. It's just a plain old five volt, half an amp uh, charger that gives you about five watts. So you have to be really careful about where you get them. The first fast charging standard, if you want to call it a standard, uh, came out over 10 years ago with uh, some of the Apple laptops. Since the iPad and some of the bigger iPhones needed more uh, charge uh, mm -hmm. power, what they did was they increased the amount of power that would be provided by a standard USB port. And uh, this wasn't completely a standard. This was just uh, Apple saying, well, if we can provide more power safely, we'll just do so. And uh, a lot of the fast chargers that you get, the cheap ones, the $10 ones or whatever, uh, do this. They give you 10 watts instead of 5. And that's okay. It's not the fastest, but at least it's a tad faster than the usual. With that in mind, uh, companies such as Qualcomm and, and others got together and started creating these faster charge protocols that provide a little bit more smarts, not only to the charger itself, but also to the device that you're charging. And that allows for more power to be sent over the same wire. But you have to take into account that not only does the charger have to support it, not only does the device and the battery have to support it, also the cable has to support it. And unfortunately, a lot of the times people will use cheaper cables or bad cables or frayed cables. And the problem with that is if they try to provide the power, the smarts in the device should 
power it down so that it doesn't overheat or create a short that easily. So you'll say, hey, I have a fast charger. The phone says it's fast charging compatible, but why is it charging so slow? Some phones, uh, for, the, for example, the Samsung I have, uh, will tell you, hey, uh, either your charger or your cable is not rated for the power, so I'm going to charge slowly. And you can dismiss the message, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you can't force it to, to charge, charge any faster. faster. Okay, well, we're going to take a break for Trees of Music. Uh, we're talking with Dr. Computer, Alex Newman, here on The Breakfast Show. It's getting, it's getting kind of hectic. There we go. That is Snap and uh, Power. Renee just said, she said, I just got the song you're playing. A little tired from traveling all day yesterday. Quality. Welcome back. And also a very good morning to Alessio. Alessio Mini over there at Valley Motors as well. Snap. <laughs> mm, there we go. Yeah, good. Don't make them like they used to, you know. Do they, Alex? No. And some of them, they make them better. So... And I tell you what, talking about they don't make them like they used to, talking about power, we're talking about batteries and charging batteries and so on and so forth. One of my pet peeves is that now you can't get at your goddamn battery. Okay, and I've had phones, at least three phones now, when the battery starts expanding and ruining and you can't open it, it's sealed. Don't give me the BS about, well, they're waterproof. Hey, have you not heard of a rubber seal that when you close it tight, it doesn't let the water in? Laptops. You can't change a battery. We well, can, but you've got to dismantle your machine to do it. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. It's more about now, let's make more money. Let's make them give the phones back to get them fixed. Come on, give me a break. Yeah, there's a whole movement called the right to repair. Mm, I mean, that has following to do, that. Yeah, that has to do not only with batteries, but a lot of other uh, computer parts and such. Um, Last night I was uh, upgrading the laptop, uh, uh, the laptop battery. It's already about three years old, so it's it's kind of in need of uh, of a change. And um, so yeah, I had to take it apart. And uh, fortunately, as opposed to some of those uh, other brands that you don't like as much, the battery was not glued. It was just screwed. So I just took out four screws, uh, got the the number of the battery looked it up on amazon and it was like 35 dollars or something so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's going to be coming in in the next couple of weeks unfortunately because it since it's a, ba a battery to go by ship and, and yeah and it has to go through all sorts of uh safety protocols which uh you know it's it's interesting that you know they have to do that where you know everybody on the plane is flying with a Surprisingly, I think I told you, but I mean, my HP um, battery, um, not this on my other laptop, mm -hmm. uh, needed replacing. I found it locally. I found a very good uh, place. That, um, it, it, it's a Chinito. Mm -hmm. It's right next to uh, Banesco mm -hmm. in El Dorado. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been past, I don't know how many times. Mm -hmm. And got in touch with them. Yes, we've got it. They added on the thing. Price was good, very good, mm -hmm. and it was a genuine HP battery. They weren't giving me a, a thing. It was a genuine battery with them. Um, so that is a good sign because I get frustrated like you do with, you know, every time you need a, a new battery, you have it sent from the States, then it gets to Miami, then it goes, uh, like you say, on ship, which is not a bad service. I'll give them their clue. It's about a, an extra week to, to do it. Um, but we have HP here in Panama. Why aren't they having the, giving us the batteries here? I'm guessing because it's more of a distribution center. It's kind of like where you have a, a hydroelectric dam and the village next door to it doesn't have any power. <laughs> kind of the same distribution problem. And speaking of distribution, there's also a great place for laptop batteries. It's very inconspicuous in that regard. It's right in front of the... Um, place where Via Argentina meets uh, Via España. It's called Electronica Caribe. Oh, I know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't go there and buy I the battery. I, I checked with them first. By the way. Yeah. Uh, I didn't go there to get my battery because I had this $50 gift certificate from Amazon mm -hmm. thanks to the mm -hmm. nice folks at okay. ViewSonic. So I, I used that to buy the battery. So, yeah. So anyways, getting back to our power and charging uh, we spoke about fast charge protocols, and one of them is called Quick Charge. It was developed by Qualcomm and other companies that got together and said, okay, guys, let's 
let's all try to agree at least somewhat in these fast charge standards. And you can see a lot of these uh, chargers now, especially the brand name ones like Belkin and Anchor, for example, have a symbol that says QC or quick charge, and mm -hmm. it has several levels. There's quick charge one, quick charge two, quick charge three. There's, I believe, a quick charge four and five on the way that provide even faster power charging. So that's going to be uh, an interesting development to check out. And I have in my hand something that's about the size put it, put, of... Put, put it away. <laughs> I know it's radio. But... <laughs> it's about the size of uh, two matchboxes. And it's a charger that provides not only quick charge uh, compatibility so that it can charge quick charge compatible devices. Mm -hmm. It also has another standard called USB power delivery. USB power delivery, you may have seen it first on uh, Apple branded laptops, like the one I have in my hand. Um, they can provide more power by increasing the voltage from five volts to 10, 15, and so on and increasing the amount of current that can then flow through the cable if the cable provides support for that. They mm -hmm. have to be thicker cables, of course. And uh, it allows faster charging on a lot of devices that support it. For example, the phone I have does support its own proprietary Samsung uh, fast charge protocol, which runs at about 15 to 18 watts, but it also uh, will talk to USB power delivery uh, uh, type chargers and the sorry the one i have in my hand can provide up to 100 watts of power so it can power my laptop and my phone at the same time without a problem and the reason for this being so tiny is that it uses something called gallium nitride or g-a-n mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. short you will see a lot of these chargers mm -hmm. yeah you will see a lot of these chargers coming up in the next couple of months and years because they allow chargers to be smaller lighter and less prone to getting too hot to handle They're, they may get warm but not uncomfortably so and they last a lot longer they're cheaper to make they're just better all around so look for gallium nitride type uh, chargers if you can i think i saw that in star trek when they went for the, trying to find the gallium all over the galaxy something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that being said sometimes you're far away from a power plug so you go to one of these oh. power packs or, or uh, portable batteries and so on. This one is from our friends at Xiaomi. And the cool thing about this one is that it not only supports fast charge, it also supports USB power delivery. And you can use it to do weightlifting. Yeah, it's about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a kilo. It's quite heavy. A little bit. But it's got 20,000 milliamp hours of battery life. Okay. So you can charge a flagship phone four times over and still have a little bit left. Wow, that's good. Yeah. It's worth the wait. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> In both. So uh, and how much would this cost? About $60 or so. Oh, that's not bad at all. No, not at all. There you're are more expensive, mm -hmm. bigger ones. Uh, if you're a, a very mobile person that has to have a laptop running for a couple of days, mm -hmm. uh, something like this is definitely worth uh, getting. And uh, the good thing is, since it does support power delivery, it can power my laptop. That being said, well, yeah. this can only give about 45 watts, which means it can either power my laptop or charge it, not both at the same time. Right. So if I hook it up to my laptop, the power... Uh, figures are just going to stay where they are. They're not going to be charged unless I turn it off and then it starts mm -hmm. charging mm -hmm. the laptop. But it's good because I can charge my laptop, my phone, everything from a single box that I can carry in my bag and, and not worry about running out of power. That being said, I do have to be careful not to confuse the power cables. If I use a standard USB-C cable that you can get pretty much anywhere, it can only provide up to about 10 or 15 watts. So the thickness of the cable, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, I guess it's like using anything electric, depending on the kind of voltage you're going to put through it. Yes. You've got to use a particular size cable. This obviously applies to... Um, so you, you're better off, really, than buying a thicker cable for yes. everything, because then yes. it's going to be compatible as opposed to exactly. trying to use it. Exactly. Yeah, that's good advice. Exactly. This is nice. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to buy another one so I can do both arms at the same time. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah, um, just, you know, usually it's better to invest a few more dollars on 
a better power solution mm-hmm. than to you know when need it and then not have it because it's not providing the power that you need mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. also there's the safety factor the better quality ones the the better brand ones are going to be better now a lot of people ask, do I have to have the same brand as my charger, uh, as my device? Well, it does help if you make sure that it is compatible. But that being said, there are some very good, sometimes better than the manufacturer's offerings mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. good brands my like Belkin. and Anchor. That's another. Yeah, Anchor is a, is a company I like. Yeah. And I see they have, if you're not familiar with Anchor, if you go, I think it's Multiplaza. And they Albrook. Have, and Albrook, they have a little one of these little sort of uh, mini shops mm-hmm. in the aisles. And I always stop there and have a look because I've bought Anchor stuff in the past. I've u- I bought their um, USB chargers. Mm-hmm. And I've been very, very happy with, uh, with, the, with their quality. Well, one I'm very, very happy with is the one that I have, which is the equivalent to this one, mm-hmm. but for my car. It runs on the 12-volt okay. socket. Mm-hmm. But it provides up to 95 watts of power. So I can pretty much use my laptop in my car all day and not have any issues because it will charge and power my laptop at the same time. And talking about batteries, because mm-hmm. when you do that, mm-hmm. if you're not driving, mm-hmm. your car battery will probably disappear. In which case, I have a thing, which is, they're very common now, unfortunately, because I was hoping to make a lot of money on people that are broken down. It's called a Hulkman. And uh, it's uh, it's brilliant. It's just like a little brick sits in the back of my my car. And and if you know it, I did have a lot of problems with my car recently, where the battery was draining every couple of days, and I didn't have to worry because I just took this out, connected it to the battery. Little green light came on. And it said start. Go in the car. Start your car. No problem. It even worked when I couldn't even open the car door. I had to use the physical key to to open it. Hadn't done that for a long time. And um, when I connected this up to the battery, it came up with a warning. And I thought, uh-oh, now it's not going to work. What it is, is basically it says, look, the battery is below 8, eight volts. And you press the light button and the power button on the Hulkman. And then it immediately comes up and says, start to go in, you start the car. I mean, that to me is a lifesaver. It is, and, and it's it about ho- the size of two decks of cards. It's really it, tiny. It's a little bit. It's, this one is quite quite a powerful one, and it's. Um, um, but what uh, what I sort of really like about it is that it'll keep the charge. Believe it or not, eighteen months. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to worry about. Well, I've used it. I got to go and charge it. And I think when I started my car, um, when it was really down low like that, it used up about three percent, four percent, starting it up. So they're, they're well worth it. They're, they're, it's going to cost you getting up to towards 100 bucks. Yep. I got one like that at Pricemark as well. It's mm-hmm. about the size of two decks of cards. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I can't start like a Ford F-150 or a bus with it, but it works wonders with my car. Mm-hmm. It'll start it fine. And that warning uh, that you got is probably just the box saying, hey, I'm going to help you start the car, but you need to look at this battery because it's mm-hmm. pretty much mm-hmm. dead. And if you stop the car at some point, you may have to use me again. So Mm -hmm. that's basically it. One of those and one of those tire inflators and you're pretty much set. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I tell you what, let's stick in another little piece of uh, music, shall we? Sure. And uh, let me see. Um, Just having a look here. Have we got anything else with... uh... Power of Love. (laughs) Um, I could play Snap the Power again. Um... That's the, oh, I've got a lot of those. We're gonna... Something from the power station? <laughs> yeah, that's us. I can't, um, actually, it's probably because of the way I put my my, my search in. Maybe I'm something gonna... on dying light? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to play something simple. I'm going to make it a short one so we can get back with Alex in a minute. And uh, it is... It is from... When I, oh, yeah, here we go. Conway Twitty. Last hour of this morning's program, be linking up with Samuel, Samuel Batista, a Panamanian saxophonist. He studied up there at uh, Berkeley in um, Boston with the Danilo Perez Foundations. We'll be chatting with him a little bit later on. Right now, we're talking with Dr. Computer, Alex uh, Newman. We're talking about batteries and uh, powering them up. And uh, what 
is the situation with batteries now? We no longer have to worry about the memory effect. And, and Not at like. all. And should we occasionally completely discharge our battery or not at all in fact one thing that thank you for reminding me we should really take into account is that lithium ion batteries need to have some charge for the intelligent part of the battery the smarts of the battery mm. the battery controller to be able to tell how charged the battery is and how discharged it is and how fast it's charging its temperature and so on so it's not really healthy for a lithium ion battery to be completely spent for uh, any long period of time. Oh, okay. I once lost a laptop battery because I switched to another laptop for some time and I forgot to charge it and it was down to zero. And I left it for a couple of weeks like that. When I went to try to use it again, it wouldn't hold a charge. Mm -hmm. So when your lithium battery is at 0%, it's not really at 0%. It still has between 5% and 10% of its total capacity, but it reserves that for the battery controller. If the battery controller dies, it doesn't know how to talk to the battery, so it doesn't work anymore. So the best thing to do if you have something that you're not going to use for some time, if the battery is removable, of course, please remove the battery. This doesn't apply to a lot of stuff nowadays, but if you can, remove the battery after having it charged to mm -hmm. about 80%. Mm -hmm. Most batteries, most lithium ion batteries will have a pretty long life if you charge them and keep them charged between 40 and 80% all the time. In fact, some laptops have software in them and there's a new setting in some of the later version of, uh, versions of Mac OS that allow you to condition the battery to run between 40 and 80% all the time so that it extends its lifetime. If you store the battery at 100%, it'll discharge a lot faster. If you store it at 80%, it will probably stay between 80 and 60% for months at a time. So take it out maybe once or twice a year, charge it up to about 80% and put it back to wherever you were keeping it in a cool, dry place or whatever. Um, so just be careful about that. If you keep them at 100%, they might drain a little faster and not last as long. So you can charge them and discharge them at any time. There's no memory effect. There's no need for that. And uh, that 60 to 80% figure Usually when you take something out of a box and it comes with a battery or whatever, you will notice that it has around a little bit over 50% of mm -hmm. charge mm -hmm. because it was probably charged to 80% at the factory before being shipped out and put on a shelf for you to use. So that's why a lot of devices nowadays do come with some charge uh, yeah. and yeah. you can that's use them that. right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have to charge them overnight like you used to with some devices. I mean, an interesting interesting point, interesting question is, um, you know, with the development of, uh, of batteries, why have we still got lead-acid batteries in our cars? Because it's a lot cheaper. Um, a but lot cheaper. Yeah, but it would last a lot longer, wouldn't it, lithium battery in a car? Depends. Um, there's also different kinds of needs for batteries. You have batteries such as the ones in cars, in, in internal combustion engine uh, vehicles that only need a very large surge of power for a very short amount of time to start the internal combustion engine. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time, they're not doing much of anything. So that's why lead acid batteries are a lot better than that uh, for that purpose. If you use the lithium battery, it would probably occupy a lot less space. But in the event of a major crash, it would explode. So okay. you'd have to mm -hmm. armor that mm -hmm. part a lot more if you wanted to use a lithium battery. But on the other hand, if you have something like a hybrid vehicle or a fully electric vehicle, it's going to need a lot of these uh, batteries. So that's something that you have to take into account as well. And these are going to be really expensive batteries. If you think $40 for a laptop battery is expensive, now imagine multiplying that by like 100 times for the size of a, uh, a regular electric car battery. Uh, you will have to replace it, you know, every uh, two or three years or something like that on, on, on some of these devices. So you have to take that into account as part of the mm -hmm. cost of uh, these devices. There are also batteries for the home 
that you can use. Uh, Tesla's famous for some of their uh, devices, but you can also use lead-acid batteries for that purpose as well. Well, now they're bringing electric cars out. I think it's the Ford F-150 Lightning, which they have bought out, which is an incredible piece of kit. Um, you can even plug into the back of your uh, vehicle and keep your home supplied with electricity. Yeah, I mean, some people are actually doing not only that, but also... Uh, you know, powering all sorts of other things like, mm -hmm. you know, businesses that have to be on the go. They can power from uh, the vehicle, mm -hmm. which is basically exactly. just a large battery with four wheels and a computer. Mm -hmm. That being said, Ford's not only the only manufacturer, there's also a lot of uh, Chinese and European manufacturers as well making I'll a lot of what, some interesting fantastic, cars. Yeah, fantastic. I've seen the one from, I think it's um, Hyundai. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also one Kia. I mean, they, they, and these cars that look fantastic. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Well, to wrap up, I just want to say, read what the manufacturer says on your battery, on your charger, and on your cable, and be really careful. Don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, don't make any mistakes with that because you know they can catch fire or explode. All right, and uh, that uh, ends our current affairs program for this morning. And uh, thanks, Alex. And Orbin, we'll see you next week. Yep, hope so. All right. Doctor Computer Alex Newman with us here on this.